we are one in the spirit and we gather together as the body of Christ around this time of worship. Welcome. Well, good morning, church, and welcome to worship at River Road United Methodist Church. Pastor Darcy Johnson here. Thank you so much for joining us for worship. If you would, give us a shout out and a good morning in the comment section. Well, it has been quite a week in the life of our nation, and it continues to unfold. Like so much of this year, we are experiencing a weighty waiting while we keep on living in faith, which is why it is important that we engage in this time of worship for guidance, for strength, for scriptural how-tos and Holy Spirit notifications that remind us of who we are as followers of Christ. So welcome to this time, God's time with us and for us. Welcome to worship. sorrow and dead in my sin lost without hope and no place to begin your love made away let mercy come Death was rested in my life again. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained. My orphan heart was given a name. My grew quiet my feet rose to dance when death was arrested in my life Good morning, church. Welcome to worship. Let's praise the Lord this morning with Every Giant Will Fall by Ren Collective. I 
can see the promised land Though there's pain within the plan There is victory in the end Your love is my battle cry When my fears like Jericho Build walls around my soul When my heart is so A church update, we continue to offer worship online at 10 a.m. and an in-person on-site drive-in worship option on Sundays at 10.30 where you can remain in your car or sit outside in the beautiful autumn weather. Also in just a moment, we welcome Mr. Tom York, the chair of the stewardship team, and he's going to be reminding us we're in week three of four out of our stewardship season. The theme is all in, based on Ephesians 4, 6, that God is above all and through all and in all. And because God is all in for us, we can be all in for the mission. And Tom will be sharing with you how you can plug in to the stewardship efforts within our congregation in the coming week. Also a missions update, we continue to invite you to plug in to one of the several missional opportunities that we are offering, whether it's tying a blanket that can go to keep a person or a family warm through some of our missional partnerships, um, or and um, to join in and help prepare a Thanksgiving box through the Henrico Hearth Thanksgiving boxes to provide a Thanksgiving meal for a local family this holiday. 
All of these missional opportunities are on our Facebook page, um, and there's a link right there in your online bulletin as well as on our website, so please join in. And now a word with our young disciples. I invite the young disciples, come and join with me around the screen as we learn what it means to love God and serve neighbor. So today we are thinking about a big word that's lived out in small ways all throughout each and every day. Are you ready? The word, a big word, important word, lived out in small ways. The word is L-O-V-E. What does that spell? Love, you're right. And love is a big word, but God asks that we live it out in small and many, many ways all throughout every day. And to help us think about that, we go to God's word, we go to scripture. In particular, we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Here, the Apostle Paul writes to a church and tells them how they can live out the big love word in many, many specific, detailed, particular ways in every single day. He writes this, love is patient, it's kind, it isn't envious or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, but it rejoices in the truth. Love believes all things, hopes all things, love never ends. So. Let's think about the big love of God and the many ways we're gonna live it out. Let's learn more about these details of living God's love. You ready? So I'm gonna show you some hand motions and if you'll repeat after me, you ready? Love is patient. You can hold your hands out and repeat after me. Love is patient. And then take a deep breath because sometimes that's what we need to do to be patient. Love is kind. And then we share that kindness with others. Love is not rude. And rude is when we say things that hurt other people or do things that hurt other people. It's not rude. Love rejoices with the truth. Good job. Love never ends. Let's try that one more time. Love is patient. Deep breath. Love is kind. Sharing it with others. Love is not rude. Love rejoices with the truth. And love never ends. And indeed, in Christ, God's love never ends and we are refueled and given more of God's love so that we can show patience and kindness, avoid rudeness, rejoice in the truth, and remember that God's love never ends. If you would, let's join together in a prayer. So hold your hands out and repeat after me. Loving God, thank you for your love. Help us to live it out. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's toss up those prayers. Ready? One, two, three. And there goes the love of God through you, doing patient and kind, avoiding rudeness, rejoicing in the truth, remembering that God's love never ends all around the world, starting in your household. So we continue to worship the Lord this morning through song and also a particular word of gratitude to the Kemp family for offering our scripture proclamation this morning. Take my life in let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. 
take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee take my voice and let me sing always only for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages from me take my silver and my gold not a might would i withhold take my intellect and use every power as you choose here am i pleasure to serve as a stewardship chair for River Road United Methodist Church. 2020 has been quite a turbulent year. Our church has been blessed by the consistent giving of the members of River Road. Just about 200 families and individuals provide financial support, which is a sole source of uh, support for our church um, on a recurring basis. We appreciate your estimates of giving as it allows our church to effectively plan for 2021 and beyond. Our church budget is just about $700,000 each year to continue our mission of loving God and supporting our neighbors in our community. This year, you can um, provide your estimate a number of different ways. In the mail, you'll be receiving an all-in card. Feel free to fill this out. You can drop it off at the church office or next Sunday during Commitment Sunday. If you come to our drive-in worship, just drop it in the basket as you're departing our parking lot. You can also give online. Check your email. You'll receive a message from River Road where you can access a Google form and confidentially provide your estimate of giving via the online Google form as well. If neither of those work for you, just contact our church office. Eva Booth, our church secretary, will be happy to take your estimate of giving and record that on your behalf. Just give her a call or drop her an email or even stop by. Thanks a lot for your continued support. It is the ongoing and steady commitment of financial generosity that allows our church to continue to fulfill its mission. Thank you very much. All in. Good morning, church. This week's readings comes from Philippians 2, 1 through 11. If there's any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish, selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus should every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us pray together. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For indeed, God, you are our rock and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, I remember when I first came to River Road United Methodist Church to serve as pastor in July, 2015. 
And I did what you do when you're new to an organization or a job or a community. You size things up, you take things in, you listen for what people say and what they don't say. In short, you get a lay of the land. And I remember asking multiple people over time, so how would you describe River Road United Methodist Church? What is important to the fellowship here? Now, let me state the obvious. Every church wants to love God and worship, make and grow disciples, impact the larger community. But I do believe that God gives every faith community some unique features within this larger Christian DNA in terms of how they live it out. Every church has particular focuses, distinct passions, specific community strengths as they live out the mission of the church. I was listening for what God had given as the main melody through the people here. And two stood out. First, people told me there was a commitment to missional service, to try to serve like Jesus. And secondly, there was a value that this congregation held a mutual respect for one another, even as people stood in different places, ideologically or politically, because all were under the Lordship of Christ. So a passion to serve like Jesus and a respect born of God. A passion to serve like Jesus. As I was assimilating into the community, I heard repeatedly people speak about the importance of trying to serve like Christ. And then I remember I went to my first missions committee meeting and there were many tables set up. There was about 20 people there. And I heard about mercy ministries where we volunteered or gave to support affordable housing or adequate health care or food provision. I heard about justice ministries where members were challenging systems that impact the quality of people's lives, the opportunities that they had access to. And I remember looking at the missions budget for the first time and there were 19 different missional partnerships. This is everything from crossover healthcare to stop hunger now to prison ministries. And then there were eight more mission supports when you consider our conference apportionments and then nine more missional commitments in our dedicated accounts. And of course the math kept multiplying when you considered whatever the United Methodist women were doing for missions, which is always significant. The women are always up to something. And then also the youth group and the children's program. I remember saying something to one person on the missions team about the missions budget, and they said to me laughing, they said, oh yes, no one messes with the money that God has asked us to give away. Even now, and maybe especially now during the pandemic, if you walk into the activities room, which is one of the larger classrooms here in the church, you're gonna see a section designated for the Thanksgiving boxes they're being assembled so that families in Henrico County can count on a full Thanksgiving meal. And included in that box is a note of encouragement and a blessing and of prayer. And over here on these tables, you would see some hand-tied fleece blankets designated to help keep families and people warm this winter. I especially think about how they're gonna to go to support um, people and families through the Caritas ministry that helps support people who are experiencing temporary homelessness. And then if you looked in the hallway, you'd see some, some bins and bags of food um, because the collection bin outside that goes to support the Ginner Park and Wellborn Food Pantries has overflown. And then you might look over here in this corner and see some items, some school items for the MICA initiative that will be designated for the children um, as they move through the school year. And then in this corner, you'll see that someone dropped off some baby items for a family. And then over here, the missions team is gonna start clearing things off to get ready for the angel tree ministry. And while this type of giving away of needed items is very important, even more what I have come to see over these last five years is people willing to give themselves away through relationships in the hours and the time and the energy given to offer safety and encouragement and hope to others. I realize now that long before we had a stewardship series called All In, I was seeing how we as a church believe that God had called us to be all in for missions. 
Now, we know that many churches do an amazing job by the grace of God in missional sacrificial service. So this is not just a unique call to our church. It's a call to all churches. Um, I am not patting ourselves on the back, especially when you think about the scripture that we just had proclaimed this morning, which is all about humility. Rather, we are praising God on the back this morning because it is the Lord who has energized within us this particular heart. Well, actually, rather than a heart, God has given us a particular mind, as our scripture says from Philippians 2, the mind of Christ that compels us as a community to keep asking, where do you need us to go for you, Lord? Here we are, send us. I also want to mention the second communicated value our church holds because there's a connection that of a respect born of God among our church family because we are all under the Lordship of Christ, the name of Jesus, at whose name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And I say this because, as we know, our nation has become increasingly more polarized along political lines. We're now in the, in the somewhat of the wake um, of a presidential election. And the lines have been drawn so that disagreements um, are not just about policy anymore. They seem more core, more character, and it's affecting the way, it can affect the way that we see one another. And this is something we have to be very aware of and prayerful about in terms of how it impacts our church family, our larger Christian witness that the Lord asks us to hold and to bear, and the mutual respect born of God that we value and we treasure. And so let's consider a portion of God's word this morning of Paul's letter to the church in Philippians and see what it has to say about these unique features that God has given to us in terms of how we live out the gospel. We remember that Paul writes to this community um, in Philippi around 60 AD um, he founded this church, and when Paul writes this letter, he is imprisoned. Um, and in part, he writes to the Philippian church to say thank you to them because they had just sent a large gift and provision to him. You see, in first century Roman jails, food and provisions were not provided. Family and friends had to do this, and apparently that's what the Philippian church had done, sent Paul provisions that helped to sustain him during his imprisonment. Um, so apparently on their church's budget, they had a line item that said Paul's prison ministry. And they surely probably sent food, maybe a blanket, money, even maybe parchment and ink that he could have penned some of his letters that became our scripture. Well, in this letter to the church in Philippi, Paul says this as he teaches them how they are to be church. He says, be of the same mind, have the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Do you see where Paul says that being of one accord in the mind of Christ, where it will take us? It takes us to the commitment of missional service. We experience the same mind, the same love, when we as the church are focused on serving like Jesus. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. We live into the promise of this passage every time we include food pantries on our grocery list. We live into this passage every time we add children and families onto our Christmas gift buying plan through Angel Tree. We live into this passage when we use our vacation time to go and serve on Appalachia Service Project to do home repair. We live into this passage when we give financially to keep alive the over 40 ministries that we believe God has asked us to support. And Paul goes on to tell us how all of this is possible not because of who we are, but because of who we follow and who it is we worship. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, he writes, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, 
even death on a cross. Paul says it clearly that the ways in which Jesus has been all in for us by pouring his life out before God makes it possible for us to be all in for one another and for missional service, for a one accordness born of God. When it is easy and straightforward, and even and especially when it costs us something. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. May you continue to make it alive within us as we live for you. Amen. And now we continue to praise and worship this morning as we sing and as we pray.
as we move into this time of communal prayer, I want to say thank you for everyone who has been sharing prayer concerns there in the comment section. And I want to assure you how those prayers are held by the congregation and the staff as we move through each week. There is power as we name our prayers and gratitudes um, before God and with one another. So I invite you to do so at this time um, and as we move through this time of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, of this day and every day, we praise your name and we give you thanks. And as we begin this time of communal prayer, we want to take time to say thank you. Thank you for the significant relationships in our lives. Thank you for people who care for us and love us because of who we are and at times in spite of ourselves. Thank you for work and rest. Thank you for home and safety. Thank you for enough food to eat and clean water to drink. Thank you, God, for the crisp of the air and the beauty of an autumn day. And Lord, we know the importance of cultivating and holding fast to gratitude and the eternal importance of knowing who it is we have to thank in you. And so, Lord, forgive us when we fall into the trap of comparison and our life comes up short because nothing robs joy like comparison. Forgive us when we begin to think that all we have is ours and mine rather than entrusted to us from you to steward. Forgive us when we think too highly or too lowly of ourselves. Forgive us when we sin. Lead us, God, from temptation and deliver us, set us free from the influences of evil, we pray. And I invite you to take some time in the quiet to confess your own sins before the Lord. May you hear the good news of the gospel ring out within the very core of your being that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and this proves it demonstrates God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and set free. Thanks be to God. So Lord, just as we called to mind that for which we are grateful, with the same breath we pray and act and serve for others because prayer is a significant missional activity. We pray for your grace to be with those who are missing the touch of a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are making job applications and seeking employment and fearful about finances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who cannot rest safely in their home or neighborhood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those in our communities and counties and country who are experiencing food scarcity and hunger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we call to mind those who are struggling with mental health or mental illness at this time who are feeling stretched and overwhelmed. May they receive the help and support that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, may we be your church who truly loves you by the ways in which we serve others and tries on your behalf to love people to life. May we be a missional church in what we do and how we do it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, God, for the over 40 missional partners that you have led us to connect with, and we ask that you empower them to be about your kingdom work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our nation in the midst of presidential election, decision, and transition, and response. We pray, God, for the health and integrity of our nation and its leaders. We pray for the weeks and the months to come within our nation that is deeply divided. We ask, Lord, that at this time there will be some measure of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue, God, to pray for public servants, for firefighters, for EMT, for police officers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We gather all of these prayers together and mindful, Lord God, um, 
throughout our nation as we continue to pray for um, a safe and effective vaccine um, to COVID-19 and all those who are struggling. Um, we pray that your healing balm will be with them. We lift all of these prayers before you as we gather them together and we fold them into the prayer that you first gave to us in the Lord's Prayer, praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so we ask God to strengthen us for the days ahead, to fortify the relationships among us, and to humble us for the kingdom work to which we are called. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let's go be the church. Amen. <laughs>